Hi everyone, this is Yash and in this video we'll complete the rack implementation that we had discussed. So in the last couple of videos we were discussing the ideas around uh, retrieval augmented generation and uh, we also discussed how to build a retriever which will work on semantics. So uh, in this video we'll put together everything, we'll actually build a complete pipeline where given a question you get an answer from any document that you uh, want to query. So basically you can do question answering over any document through this. Uh, so let's uh, start directly. Um, some parts of the code I'll be uh, taking from the last video that is the retriever part. Uh, you can also watch that video if you haven't but you can also watch this video as well. So uh, let's just import uh, some libraries first. Uh, PyPDF is for reading the PDFs programmatically. Uh, we'll see how we'll do that. Sentence transformer is for getting the uh, embeddings and the chroma db is for vector, is the vector db that we will be using we are also taking transformers for the llm purposes so we'll be using llama 2 model and uh, yeah some housekeeping stuff related to torch and some device so first what we'll do is we'll read the pdf uh, document that we uh, you know want to ask questions from i have just found this code uh, online on on stack overflow i have given the link as well so basically, uh, we use this uh, pi PDF uh, which we have import imported already, and uh, what we'll do is uh, it 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 takes a path, just the path of the PDF. So it's uh, the PDF I've placed in the same folder, and it's uh, just the Llama 2 paper uh, that is there. It's the 77 page PDF uh, that we saw in the last video as well. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, read it, and uh, maybe for now we'll just print the page number the number the sorry the number of pages so it says uh, there are 77 pages uh, in this and uh, when we uh, you know actually extract the text so let's just take the first page the zeroth uh, the zeroth page and uh, we'll print out the content from that page so you can see this is the content that it prints uh, after reading the pdf so this is the title of the paper and uh, this is the uh, the author list and this is the uh, like the organization that these authors are from which is a uh, meta and it has the abstract as well so in the last video we took the abstract manually but um, uh, we are getting the abstract here programmatically by reading the pdf and these are i think some some of the footers that are there uh, in the in the first page at least so we this this way we are reading the uh, pdf what we can do is uh, we can sort of combine all these pages into one single document. Let's do that by uh, extracting the text from all pages. So we'll just loop through the pages and uh, for each page we'll extract the text and we'll save it. Next what we can do is we can just join all these pages using a new line or something. So basically this document what we get it's like a complete consolidation of all 77 pages of the, of the document. Uh, you can take any document you want, any PDF that you want that you want to ask questions on. For now, in this uh, for this video, we'll take example as, for as this uh, Llama 2 paper that is there. And uh, this document variable contains all the text present in that PDF, the all the 77 pages combined. So, uh, should I print it, uh, or maybe I, I can just print it? I guess so. So you see like if we scroll we can see all the 77 pages combined using a new line mm, and this is all the text that is there. So this is our knowledge where uh, uh, all the facts are uh, encapsulated and we can start asking uh, questions on this text. As discussed in the uh, previous video, we uh, there is some context length uh, that is there which uh, our LLM is limited by. So we can't give it uh, the whole text, right? So that's why we'll be chunking this text. I got this simple uh, function uh, online on Stack Overflow, which uh, chunks a string based on the chunk size and the overlap. So it's like a character uh, based chunking that we'll do. Uh, basically, we just have to pass in the document here and we just have to give uh, how many characters we want in each chunk and uh, we can do some overlap uh, between the chunks as well so some part of the characters will be present in both the chunks the consecutive chunks so say for example uh, when we do chunking uh, we pass the document and let's say we give like thousand characters so there will be thousand characters present in each chunk and uh, the overlapping will be of hundred characters so when we run this 
we get our chunks let's print the uh, 0th chunk the first chunk uh, so it definitely has the title and the author so you can see and it uh, like it ends very abruptly the the chunk ends very abruptly you can say and then uh, maybe let's try printing the uh, next chunk as well after this so you see it uh, uh, starts with uh, HEN which is uh, uh, maybe somewhere here uh, before Zhang so this is where it starts uh, this is because of the overlap that we have the 100 character overlap and it starts and it starts from here and uh, it goes on till uh, so introduction is about to start I guess from the next page uh, but it has all the abstract in this chunk so this is the way like uh, uh, the character chunking works but uh, you can also do word level chunking or even sentence level chunking however you want and uh, this is a big uh, like way, pa parameter or uh, you can see like a tweaking designing decision that that you can take for designing your rack pipeline the the, the performance of the whole pipeline uh, could could change based on the parameters you change here like the if if you are using character level chunking and even if you are using character level chunking then uh, how many character size is your single chunk and and what is the overlap and so on we can keep overlap and we can make make the overlap zero as well uh, but it's good uh, to have some overlap so uh, let's see uh, like how many chunks we got uh, let's just print length of chunks so we have 281 chunks you can see uh, and these 281 chunks we'll be pushing into the vector db uh, and from these chunks we'll retrieve uh, uh, the specific chunk which uh, will be useful for our questions so let's start building a retriever uh, in the last video we already built a retriever so let's just go a little fast on this uh, we'll first import an embedding model and in this case i'm using all mpnet base v2 in the last video we used another uh, embedding model but this is another one that we are using so uh, even this is a parameter to choose from uh, your rag performance depends uh, on the embedding model that you choose as well so make sure you choose like a, a best embedding model that suits your needs and so on so we we got the embeddings for each of these chunks now so you see uh, the shape of this chunk embeddings is 281 by 768 so this 768 is dimensions for one single embedding embedding for one single chunk so these are uh, 768 dimension long and for each of those 281 uh, chunks we have uh, this this corresponding vector that is there also another part to keep in mind is this uh, the the embedding model that we use even that has some sequence length uh, limitation so uh, you might have to lower the number of characters or words that you put in single chunk just because uh, your embedding model won't be able to handle longer text so even that becomes uh, another factor just uh, keep in mind uh, that as well so each of these embedding model also has uh, limitations we should act based on those limitations as well uh, now that we have the uh, the embeddings for each of these chunks let's push them to a vector db which is the chroma db that we'll use so let's uh, uh, you make a chroma client and uh, we'll create a collection called uh, rag llama 2 you can uh, name it whatever you want and we'll name the uh, we'll use this collection to index the chunks that we have so in this collection let's uh, add these embeddings so we are passing this chunk embeddings that we have in, in here and in documents we are passing the chunks this is the actual textual chunks and these are the corresponding embeddings for which we are uh, adding indexing in our vector db uh, and just the ids we are just uh, looping through the chunks and we are just uh, uh, like one two three basic uh, it starts from zero so zero one two three uh, till 70 uh, sorry till 280 will be the ids for e each of these chunks so these are added now in our collection once these are added now in our in the collection we can uh, you know have this uh, small function to uh, have a query uh, to retrieve the relevant uh, chunks let's say now uh, in this query uh, uh, function that we have the small retriever function we are taking a query and uh, basically we are querying the collection but uh, here for query embedding we are just embedding that query that we get so uh, basically just uh, passing the embedding 
for that query and uh, we can have like number of results as a as a parameter here based on this we'll get the top first or top two or top three uh, results that we want just to show an example uh, let's say we have a query like what is llama to chat and uh, we'll pass it through the function for now the number of results are uh, set to default which is 3 uh, let's run this and see how this works and uh, let's uh, let's print this results so uh, you see we get a list of uh, basically three chunks this is uh, one uh, one chunk and this is the second one and the rest is the third one this has to be somewhat related to llama 2 chat uh, is what the hope is and you can see maybe here uh, users of llama 2 chat may observe overly cautious approach so some things are present about llama 2 chat before deploying any applications of llama 2 chat developers should perform safety uh, so it's talking about safety about llama 2 chat, chat uh, model uh, it has some cut here of llama 2 that is optimized for dialog cases so it it did take this one dialog cases but the sentence is kind of broken so i'm not sure uh, uh, how well this will be but uh, overall like this will be the topmost result basically since we are not uh, 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 you know reordering the the results this was the top one uh, result you can say the topmost ranked result this was the second one and this was the third one i wouldn't say i'm very much happy looking at this this uh, at, at least at this particular example but maybe the query is also very generic uh, in this case but we can't say that uh, so for this case uh, we might increase uh, the number of results from 3 to maybe 5 or even 10 uh, let's say if, if 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 our llm can handle so much context and i think this is pretty uh, all the three combined is still pretty small so uh, we can think of adding more results as well but for now let's just uh, go ahead with uh, these three uh, chunks that we are retrieving so let's keep number of uh, retrievers as three itself let's prepare the context by joining uh, these three retrieved results so we are just joining it uh, using like double new line so this becomes our context so whatever was retrieved earlier we just convert it to a single text uh, or a single string you can say uh, which we can give it to to an llm uh, to ask questions on so this becomes our uh, whole context string we can pass this context string to the LLM. So uh, let's uh, load the model first. Uh, we'll be using Llama2 chat uh, model for this. Also, let's get the response function that we, uh, we have been using for a while now. Now comes the part where we kind of consolidate everything. So we take this, uh, so we create this prompt here. Uh, we say in the prompt, like give answer for the question strictly based on the con context provided. So we don't want uh, LLM to generate its own answer, but based on the context that we'll get provide, we want uh, it to answer the question. And we'll pass the query variable here. Query is nothing but uh, what we use to retrieve. So this is the query that we have. What is llama, llama to chat? And the context is what uh, we consolidated all the three retrieved results here. And uh, this is the prompt that we create. So let me just print and show you how the prompt looks like. So this is the prompt uh, it, after plugging in all the variables that is there. It just uh, plugged in the question and the context here. And uh, once we make the LLM call, uh, let's see what answer it generates. Um, okay, so it just prints the complete thing. Uh, so this is the prompt uh, till here. And uh, this is the answer that it gives. So based on the context provided, llama to chat is a chatbot or conversational AI model that has been trained and fine-tuned for various use cases, including dialogue and language generation. Kind of okay, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we can say it's kind of correct. The model is released by Meta AI and is available for both research and com commercial use. However, the model carries potential risk with its uh, use and the team provides guidelines and code examples for developers to deploy it. The model is opti optimized for dialogue use cases and variants for this model with different parameter sizes are released. Okay, uh, pretty decent, uh, pretty good answer. The team also provides responsible release strategy including safety and testing uh, and uh, safety testing and tuning to ensure the safe deployment of the model. Okay, so uh, since it by chance retrieved some safety related uh, chunks, some toxicity, truthfulness and all, 
maybe it's talking a lot about safety in its answer but uh, but you see it, it it's because uh, of the retrieval system that kind of went a little bit wrong you can say uh, to some extent it's generating this kind of answer it's not comp- the answer is not completely wrong but uh, it's not very convincing as well or uh, maybe you can try increasing the context uh, or the retrieve uh, retrieved chunks and maybe we can pass uh, two or three more chunks here which are lower ranked and we can expect the answer to uh, improve further but uh, whatever it is you see we finally got the answer to the query which we, it's it's like a proper uh, like a human language answer that we get and uh, we don't have to worry about the reading these chunks or going through the pdf uh, to get this uh some of the things here like in this chunked uh, uh text maybe it needs some processing like some spaces and all are missing i guess uh, while reading the pdf in in general we can uh, go ahead and process this uh, pdf reading stage a little more and uh, you know fix these problems but what i it's my personal opinion is llms can still handle all of these things uh, so maybe we no, need not worry a lot about uh, these things uh, till we can uh, you know like read and figure out what it's saying even llm can uh, maybe get an idea and still uh, go through it and just generate an answer for us so yeah like we can spend some time on processing as well but uh, i don't know how much uh, it will in- improve the performance as such but even that stage is is where we can experiment on and and tweak and twist and turn and change parameters and see how things are changing we have done things in parts now let's uh, still put everything together and uh, you know make an end to end kind of uh, scenario so let's say we give a query here and what we will do is we'll send this query to the retriever to get the results so i have made the results as 5 uh, 5 five, five chunks and uh, we are joining all those retrieved results again to make form the context we'll create this prompt now uh, this this prompt also uh, is another part where uh, you know we can tweak and uh, change and make this better so i've just added a small more uh, point saying that uh, keep the answer answer short uh, you can also tweak the prompt accordingly however you want maybe uh, you know things like uh, answer only with numbers or uh answer only in one line or something like that whatever you want or however you want your answer to be so we'll just plug in the query here whatever uh, it's asked and uh, uh the context uh, that it's it's there that it's there and we'll pass it through the llm for us to answer uh, get the answer okay so it generated this uh, uh text here uh it prints out the prompt as well that we gave it so it has the question here and uh, this context is basically what was retrieved so you can see uh, we asked uh, the question about uh, rlhf that is used in in lama 2 uh, about uh, how it's used and all so it uh, it retrieved some rlhf based chunks that are there so there are five chunks here so that was the first one this is the second chunk that was retrieved uh, third and fourth and and fifth here and this is the answer that it generates here the so it generates the question is how rlhf is used in lama 2 according to the context rlhf it gives the full form is used uh, in uh, lama 2 to fine tune the model so it's correct uh, the lama the rlhf method involves uh, iteratively updating the model using reinforcement learning and human feedback the context explains the rlhf algorithm is applied to lama 2 model in two stages okay so uh, it talks about the rejection sampling uh, in this stage the model is fine tuned using rejection sampling where model generates output and the human feedback is used to select the best candidate output and then it's saying the proximal policy optimization in this stage the selected output from rejection sampling stage is used to update the model using ppo so it gives us some uh, very uh, good details and all the context also explains that temperature parameter plays an important role in exploration the optimal temperature for exploration varies during the iterative model updates the author observed that optimal temperature for uh, lama 2 rlhf is between 1.2 to 
when sampling between 10 to 100 outputs. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe you can uh, go and check for these facts if it's actually correct in the paper. I'm not sure if it's correct or wrong or if it's just hallucinations. Uh, in summary, RLHF is used uh, in LAMA2 to fine tune the model using reinforcement learning and human feedback. The algorithm involves two stage rejection sampling and PPO. The optimal temperature for explanation varies from iterative model updates. Great. Uh, maybe let me look through it once. So, yeah, the uh, temperature it gives here for LAMA2 chat RLHF, the optimal temperature when sampling between, okay. 100, 10 to 100 outputs is uh, between uh, 1.2 to 1.3 and that's what it, it says here. So you see it's, it's uh, kind of uh, reading the text for us and it's creating like a, it's generating like a proper answer for us so that we don't have to go through the document, understand it and it's picking up all the pieces that we need. Uh, so yeah, that's, it's there. Uh, maybe uh, let's try one more question. Maybe let's try uh, something like uh, what are the different uh, variants of LAMA2 model. A very simple question but let's see. <laughs> uh, so let's see what it generated. Okay, there are different variants of LAMA2 model which are op optimized for various use cases. The variants include, so this is the 7B. This model has 7 million. This is suitable for dialogue use cases. Okay, this is uh, uh, slightly wrong you can say because uh, LAMA2 7B chat would have been the correct one for dialogue use case. 13B is the 13 million parameter suitable for complex dialogue cases, okay. 70 billion is suitable for most complex dialogue cases, okay. So maybe to some extent you can say it's partially correct, partially wrong. Uh, these variants are released for both research and commercial use. The developers are encouraged to perform safety testing and tuning tailored to their specific applications of the model. So you see this is how like we can start getting uh, answers for our questions that, that we have based on this retrieval and then uh, generation step where we augment the retrieved context with this query. And uh, it's not perfect. It's a little bit of uh, you know empirical uh, experiments that we want to perform to see uh, what would be the perfect scenario for, for our use case. Uh, like which embedding model to use, what is the chunking size that we should use, how much overlap we should use uh, and, 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 and which LLM should we use, even the prompts that we put together, even this is like uh, we can tweak and twist and turn, how many retrieved chunks should we include in the context. There are a lot of decisions that we made just very easily in this whole process. but. Uh, yeah, like these are all the things that we can, uh, you know, go back, uh, repeat and iterate and uh, improve upon. So that's why it's not uh, very perfect, but it, this is how the whole rag works. And uh, yeah, now you can get your answers from any document, I guess. So yeah, that, that was about the, uh, the rag implementation. I'll, I'll put the link of the code in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.